It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Hacker Mac, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in a toasty, no, no, it's just hot. It's hot. Blazing hot cabin tonight with none other than Dan Defaw, and we've got our UNJ Fishing Pro Staffer, Adam Wynn. He's sitting in the, the wings right now, so we'll have him on here in just a second. That's right. We're going to we're gonna have him on uh, doing something first for tonight, a yep. triple box. Yep. We think it's going to work, pull off. Uh, compared to last week, when we had technical difficulties in the studio... Yeah, it, it, it's okay. It would have been a lot hotter because that's the reason we didn't have a show last night. The AC went out, so we got the AC running, but it's still hot in here. So. Right. So <laughs> you know, it's been one one heck of a hot week. Um, and I tell you what, it's it's ah, it's June. Well, it's summer now, right? Yep. So, but it is what it is. And welcome to Michigan in in uh, the summertime. So well, let's uh, help the people who help us. Let's do that. And I tell you what, folks. Um, we're talking fishing tonight, but make sure you get over to buckbaits.com because they do have some fishing gear. Get over there. Check out the website, buckbaits.com. Use the promo code UNJ20. You get 20% off your order. Check out their fishing stuff that they do have over there. And new this week. And, folks, thank you to Easy Cut. We now get to offer our folks, listeners, watchers, a 15% off your Easy Cut uh, products. Use the code UNJ15 off at easycutproducts.com. You'll get 15% off your order. You see us using them all the time here at Up North Journal. So if you want some, go get some. There you go. I tell you what, Packer Max, you see. Mr. Mark Coleman pedaling it around the, the field. That was funny. And uh, Pushing a cult packer with a bike. Exactly. A three-wheeler, a bike. And if you use the promo code UNJ25, you'll get $25 off your Packer Max at PackerMax.com. Give Lincoln Roan a call. Bicycle not included. Bicycle not included. I want to see Lincoln Roan on that bicycle. <laughs> We're going to try to make that happen. We'll figure it out. Uh, Island Armory. Hope, Jason, you're feeling better. Uh, he's in recovery mode. And But... Go over to islandarmory.com. Check out what they have in stock or what you can order. Use the promo code UNJ10. You will get 10% off your order. Uh, JPO Game Calls. Again, we're heading into fall. Get your game game calls, whether it be a deer call, duck call, uh, maybe a coyote call. Get over to jpogamecalls.com. Use the promo code UNJ10. Get 10% off your order. I tell you what, we're drinking it. It's hot out, and it's hot coffee. We're drinking the UNJ blend today, and if you go to DeerCampCoffee.com, use the promo code UNJ10, you get 10% off your order over there. While you're there, make sure you pick up the Up North Journal Medium Roast Blend, which is what we're drinking here tonight. Right. I did check and see what I made. So. Oh, there you go. And if you flip over to here... We've got the Mackinac Bridge in view from the Upper Peninsula today. The other camera's down, so I found this one. It is 7 degrees up in St. Ignace as we speak. And if you go on up to Newberry and check out uh, Ciders, get a pizza and some Deer Camp coffee, you can enjoy it right there in Newberry, Michigan. Well, you know, the uh, the Mackinac Bridge is apropos tonight for our guest uh, that we're going to be talking to. For the UP, all the way up in the UP, you'd have to cross that, but we have got... Pat on from Mag's Custom Rods, all the way from Gwynn, Michigan. Pat, how you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Roasting. <laughs> What's the temperature yeah, up there? It wasn't too bad today. It was probably 75, 80, but the last two days were high 90s. Yeah, that's unusual for up there at that time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, uh, two days ago it was like 98, but it, uh, they said it was a record high. So I bet. Uh, I was loving it, though. I was soaking it up. <laughs> We don't get to see the sun very much up here, so. <laughs> there you go. Uh, also, we got Adam Wynn, uh, our UNJ Fishing Pro Staffer, on with us tonight, who uh, actually has, has purchased some of your products and recommended that we have you on the show. So, Adam, uh, you know, I'm, we're just going to kind of hand this to you a little bit here and let you run with <laughs> it a little bit. So, um, this is your first time doing an interview for us. So, Danny and I are here. We'll jump in with you, but, uh, you know. Talk a little bit about uh, why you chose uh, to, to go with Mags and, and take it away. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually found Pat on uh, Facebook just just off of random. Uh, watched him for a year. He started growing pretty pretty good. And then the uh, first thing I got from him was a ultralight ice rod. Uh, put it to the test, and it was catching fish left and right. So ended up buying two more of them. Ended up buying an open water rod from them. Bought another open water rod from them. So I got five rods from them, and they uh, they all perform very very good. So very nice. So he's he purchased some rods from you, but you said that you've been following for a while, Pat. How long have you been doing this? How long? How, what? Where did you get into rod building? So I got into it just over five years ago, but I would say first two years was just kind of like a hobby i just you know i did a decent amount but it was just kind of like i'd do it on the side and um i just got into it because i just wanted a nice steelhead rod because i was really big into steelhead back in the day and i couldn't really find exactly what i wanted so i was like all right well i'll try to make one and i did and uh showed a couple buddies and it kind of just slowly snowballed at first and uh, i was building them for friends and stuff and Mm -hmm. Then uh, after about the two year mark, uh, I was like, I think I could probably, you know, hire a couple guys and maybe turn this into something. And uh, yeah, five years later, it's been uh, keeps me busy. I work way more than I thought I would. I thought I could fish a little bit more, but I definitely can't. But uh, that's the sacrifice that I'm willing to to make right now. I, I really, really love doing what I'm doing. So it's uh, pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. You got into this, you said, as a hobby about five years ago. It took a couple of years for it to take off. So if you're working so much you can't fish, this must be your primary job now. What were you doing before you started this? So I, I owned a charter business on Lake Superior, and then I started that just before I started doing the rods. But before that, I was a professional MMA fighter. I uh, lived out of Milwaukee and trained out of there for about five years five to six years and then uh i was good you know i was, I was doing good uh, i had like 20 fights i was 19 and one and then i just i don't know fishing has always had a place in my heart and then after my last fight it was in wisconsin and uh i went fishing and i just never went back never went back to the gym i i usually would come up to the up to fish and i did and i never went back never even talked to my coach never talked to my manager I just went fishing and never came back, and uh, I told myself fishing one day, I'm like, I got to do something where I could just fish for a living or something in the industry, so I started the charter business, and then the rod business came a few months later, and they both took off, like, big time, so I bought a second boat. Last year, I had three captains running. We were running, you know, three trips a day on each boat, and we were turning down trips, and we were super busy, and Last fall, I was going to buy a third boat, and then I just was getting so busy doing the rods. I'm like, I don't know if that's what I really want to do. You know, I would rather dedicate all my time to mags and just kind of see what I could do with it. And uh, so that's what I did. I sold my charter business, and now I'm all in on mags and uh, just trying to see what we could do with it. So you, you were you were fighting in the ring, and now you, you went to fight and fish. Yeah. <laughs> fighting fish is a lot easier on the body, that's for sure. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> but I think overall I had just close to seven years as an amateur and a, and a pro, and I never even sprained my ankle. I never got knocked out. I, I've never broke a bone, and I wrestled for 15 years at a really high level, too. Never broke a bone or sprained an ankle. I mean, I've been extremely lucky when it comes to that. But I could tell there's days where I feel really good, but I definitely have some miles on the body. But I've been really, really lucky to uh, to not have ever been hurt. Well, that's, anything. that's awesome. Yeah, you, you get to do the fighting in the ring. I, I can't even imagine what that's like. I mean, most people will never have that experience. But uh, to come out unscathed, uh, you know, here we live near the Flint, Michigan area. And I, as you probably know, there's a lot of boxers that come out of this area. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, yeah, there's injuries and you know, all that kind of good stuff that goes with it and all the, the pain and turmoil you put into it in the training. So, yeah, I think fighting fish was probably probably an easy uh, easy decision to make and a lot better on the body. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, definitely an easy decision. At the time, it was, it was iffy. It was up in the air because I didn't know if any of the businesses were going to succeed. I didn't know if they were going to be, you know, but if I wasn't – doing what I'm doing successfully then I probably would regret it because I was I was really good at it and you know there were some really big doors that were there I just decided to go a different route and it worked out and I feel like 
um, I've done a lot of things in my life, and I feel like if you really want to work super hard, you could do anything. You know, you just have to put the time in. And I never dreamed that I could make a fishing pool and sell it, but I put a lot of time in the last five years and, you know, seven days a week, working long days and just busting my butt. And uh, it's happening, and I'm super grateful. It's I love what I do, and I could see myself doing it for the rest of my life. Where did the passion for fishing come from? Uh, did you start out as a young kid, family, or how did that, how did yeah. that evolve? Yeah, so I started, I remember telling, or my parents would tell me that when I was three years old, I would tell them that I'm going to be a professional fisherman when I grow up. And I just remember saying that through my childhood years. And uh, my dad got me into fishing at a young age, and I just loved it and just took it to a whole different level. And uh, I fished through throughout high school and then after high school i kind of just took a wrong turn in life and uh get, i didn't fish i didn't do anything good and uh <clears throat> kind of went down a, a tough road and uh i got into fighting and it totally brought me back to reality and uh got my head on straight and uh gave me what i needed to do to to get out of the hole i was in and uh yeah, so I've always loved to fish, and the only time I didn't fish in my life was just when I was in a dark place. But I'm super grateful for every experience I've ever had, just because I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I didn't travel those roads, you know. You know, it's the outdoors uh, has a way to bring you back around and center you and bring you home. I mean, there's times when I go to the woods or sit on the water at the edge of a lake or a stream, kayaking or whatever. And it just, nature just, it does it. It really grounds you and brings you back and kind of mm-hmm. lets you know what's mm-hmm. important in life. So yeah, I can yeah, understand I that. I love the outdoors. Do you do any hunting at all or is it mainly fishing? <clears throat> the last time I hunted, I was 14. I didn't hunt for almost 20 years. And then last fall, my brother shot an eight pointer with his bow and he called me up. He's like, hey, uh, I need a hand tracking this deer. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I drove out there and it just fired me up I'm like man what have i been doing the last 20 years so i literally went and bought a bull the next day and <laughs> wow. i just totally fell in love like i spent way too much money and got everything <laughs> i needed and i've just been absolutely hooked and then <clears throat> two months after that in december this house popped up and i was kind of looking for hunting land or something and this house popped up with some really good uh land on it uh 25 acres and it has like really good deer hunting so that came up and I, I got that and I got I got a bunch of deer in my backyard. I got four different bear coming in right now and it's it's like a animal factory. So it everything just I'm a firm believer and everything happens for a reason and I just feel like things have just fell into place. But I've worked really hard to get where I'm at too, but just it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, nothing comes easy, man. It's uh, hard work pays off, and it looks like it's definitely paying off for you. Uh, yeah, we've got some questions popping up here in the chat, also, and I'm gonna we're gonna let uh, Adam sit and, and talk to you about these rods. So let's take our first break. We come back, we're gonna get into the rod building uh, aspect of what you're doing. So okay, we're gonna step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show, and we kind of got to know Pat a you know, little bit here. He went to that, you know, like you said, he went to a dark place. He uh, ended up, the outdoors was a, was a calming source to him. Mm-hmm. He's now hooked on hunting. We're talking fishing. And just so you know, everybody, um, when we're talking with Pat, uh, w- when you're done listening, watching the interview, get on over to his website, magscustomrods.com. What we're talking about tonight, you can find everything probably right on his website from, from custom rods to some... Some yes, some bad ad, bad ass builds that he has. So uh, just go over to, to magscustomrods.com and check him out. Um, so Adam, you started off. Do uh, you want to start off in the ice fishing realm? Sure. All right. Take it away, bud. All right. So uh, 
what was like your uh how did you actually get started like building rods like did you were you self-taught or did you go to like seminars or so i uh when i built my first one i just kind of watched a few videos and building that first one i learned a ton so i just kind of like watched a bunch of videos and then i traveled all over the midwest doing these little there's these places that do like fishing convention or like rod building shows and conventions and i went there and i went to a bunch of different ones from iowa minnesota illinois wisconsin just to to learn and then take what they showed me watch the videos and just take it and kind of just i mean the best way to do it is to just do it and learn from your mistakes and i messed up quite a few rods and it gets expensive <laughs> So I just, that's how I started. And then just the more rods I built, the better I got, the better I got. And just kind of, I'm still learning, you know, like different stuff and easier way to do things, cleaner way to do things. And uh, it's fun. You know, I don't think I'll ever stop learning, you know, just learning how to, now we're a little bit bigger. So just now I'm doing more of like the operations, like more efficient ways to do things and stuff like that. So it's, it's a process building a rod. I got, before I, you know, got into it, I never realized how much goes into it. I mean, it's a, it's a process for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos you posted. It looks like a pretty lengthy process for sure. Um, yeah. uh, what kind of, uh, so everyone knows that's like listening and watching, what kind of ice rods do you like offer for like walleye, panfish, uh, big water fishing? So we offer, um, I think eight, eight or nine different models different lengths so we we offer two different styles of panfish um we got perch rods walleye rods you know pike rods pretty much anything that you can catch fish with we fish with we make and my favorite is the lake trout rod we have in a few different models and we do keep rods in stock which are still same blanks components and stuff but they're just a solid, you know, a different color just so we can keep stuff in stock ready to go. But if you want like a customized rod, we can do any length, any action, any color, handle styles. So you can, you can do a lot with them. So, yeah, yeah, I've definitely got a couple and they're uh, pretty customizable for sure. Yeah. Got the whole color wheel. Um, what is your best like selling ice fishing rod that you have? Is it the ultralight or? It's the, it's our power noodle hand. Okay. Rod. We probably sell five to one and that's including five power noodles. And that's in, compared to every other model combined uh, five to one. It's just pan fishing's absolutely huge all over and you don't need a, equipment. You can just go to a pond down the road or any lake and then they always have pan fish and they're a blast. And, uh, so pan fishing is hands down the most popular ice fishing in my opinion yeah i have a couple of those power noodles and i've actually i've caught some pretty big fish on them so yeah they can they can handle some big fish for sure yeah. so um what about like your uh your open water uh rods what's like uh what's your different uh ones you have for those so pretty much we have anything from your five foot trout rod you know our pan fish seven footer and then for our walleye stuff, we have 6'2", 6'8", 6'10", 7'2", 7'6", and mediums, medium lights. And then we have uh, our lake trout rods, our medium heavies, and then we have a full uh, five-rod line of bass rods. So, like I said, pretty much anything technique-specific or fish-specific, we can we can make or we have in stock at the shop or we can custom make, uh, make one for you with, like, any colors. And we even do fly rods um salt water we do quite a bit of salt water business so pretty much anything which uh which ones are the most difficult to to build uh the salt water stuff salt water just, they're more expensive they're bigger you need bigger tools they take up a lot more thread epoxy glue everything's more expensive with salt water and even the salt water fishing you know the lures the gas just everything is so much more expensive and the same goes for the um, the components to build a rod for them too. You know, yeah. you know, you're looking at we're looking at your website as you talk about your rods and the power noodle and stuff. But you gotta like for us, buddy in the outdoors, when you name a rod the deer meat for dinner rod. So that's a um, he's a big YouTube guy, and I was actually at my shop a few years ago, and Larry Smith was with him, and he's uh, probably one of the most uh, one of the biggest YouTubers in the country right now for the outdoors. And he stopped into the shop and I was building some tuna rods at the time. And 
he stopped in. He's like, hey, man, I want 10 of these rods. And I was like, okay, let's, I'll make them and then just bring me, bring me out fishing. So I made them. He flew me down there, brought me to the Bahamas, and we designed a rod together. And uh, he promoted it on his channel, and it did really, really good. It still does. So that was a pretty fun little project. And, and so, and so the ease of so the ease of getting you to build a custom rod. Uh, what's the time length we're looking at? You know, like like Adam wants to order a custom rod for you. What 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 time length is he looking from when he places his order? So right now it's uh, around seven to ten days, and then you got a few days of shipping. So most of the time you'll have your rod within two weeks, like it'll be at your house. That's quick turnaround. It's not. Yeah. A, it's not a bad. You know, right now considering other things that you try to order, and it's, they say months. <laughs> um, if you can get it at all. If you can get it at all. Oh, that leads me. Thank you for that. Just bringing that up. Are you running into any supply shortages? Yeah. Oh yeah, big time. But I. I uh, kind of prepped for this, so last year I just pretty much spent every dollar that I had on just bought inventory, 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 just because I would be really mad at myself if I had all this work and no product to build it. So any extra dollar that I get, I just buy inventory because I know I'm going to use it and I know I'm going to need it. So I tried to plan as best as I could for it, but uh, yeah, the supply chains are tough right now. Uh, we got a question coming here from uh, from Tammy, who is on our staff as well. She is a walleye fisherman, but she's asking for someone that doesn't have a custom rod. Uh, what what would you say to her to get them uh, the best talking point into why they should purchase a custom rod versus a store bought rod? That's the thing. If you've never tried one, you'll never understand. But you you have to hold one and fish it and use it and just see the difference, you're going to have way better sensitivity. You're, you can have the rod built exactly how you want it, way higher end components than any other mass-produced rod. And once you use one, it's extremely hard to go back to, you know, your basic fiberglass, like uh, lower end stuff. But if you've never used one, you'd never know. Like, I never even had a clue how much nicer and how much more efficient you can be and guys ask me, oh, well, if I spend that, will, you, will I catch more fish? And 100% you will because you'll feel a lot more. Yep. And it's night and day from fishing, you know, like a, a cheap, ugly stick or a lower end rod and using like something that's extremely nice and sensitive and lightweight and that's, you know, specific for what you're doing. It's it's a whole different ball game. Like you won't. It's really hard to go back once you use something really nice. You know, Adam. Adam was shaking his head as you were describing that. Adam, uh, give us your testimony on it. Yeah, I mean, especially like I said, the first rods I bought from them were ice fishing rods, and I was just using you know forty fifty dollar Fenwicks, you know, from Dicks or Dunham's or something like that. And as soon as I bought his, took it out in the ice and was catching some decent crappie with it, it was a game changer. I mean, the sensitivity on it and the fish you can feel on it, it it's definitely a night and day thing for sure. Okay, so, so uh, this I'll, I'll go to Pat for this one. Uh, the biggest fish you've caught on your smallest rod? Um, we caught a, uh, we got a 40-pound lake trout last year or no two years ago on our uh, on our 40 inch uh, medium heavy which yeah it's kind of designed as a lake trout rod but we were fishing open water for it which i was just kind of testing and just kind of seeing what we could do and what could they can handle and uh yeah we got a 40 pounder on that and then one of my buddies got a six and a half foot sturgeon on our 36 inch medium light which he uh, showed me the video and i thought for sure that was going to snap but it was it was bent right at the handle and that's I mean it's a perch rod and you're catching you know, 150 160 pound sturgeon with it so it's uh pretty cool. I tell you what, what about you, Adam? Uh, I know you've caught some big fish on those little power noodles. I think is what they're called, right? Yep. What'd you catch? Uh, that 36 inch pike uh, from last winter. That was on a power noodle, 28 inch, four millimeter tungsten jig. So there you go. It's all it's all on video too. Yeah. So, so uh Steve Schwartz says, I love my mag seven six ML and how it handles lighter jigs. Pitch the shallows for walleyes. A five star rating for that. Sweet. So there you go. Testimony coming in left and right. Uh, you know, as as we go from ice fishing to open water, you know, one of the things uh you sit there and, and like you said, um 
getting it into the hands of, of people to try a custom rod as opposed to a store bought type rod. Um, you know, they got a whole bunch of shows out. We talked in the sh- previous, uh, before the show, that you will be attending some of the shows, and we'll try to get a list of where you're going to be. That maybe we can send some people your way to to stop in and see it, get get their little hands on uh, Mag's custom rods and see what they can do and uh, show them the difference that you bring out uh, in the fishing world uh, with the touch and feel of it. Yeah, yeah, we do about six shows a year, and we do have about eighteen retailers across the midwest um just a lot of guys you know when you spend that kind of money on a rod it's nice to hold it and see what you actually want but downstate we got both of the jays stores carry them and like wisconsin we got dick smith the real shot uh north shore and Ocano, and just a handful about 18 of them across the midwest so that is awesome good to hear that you're reaching out like we said earlier he's reached out all the way to australia so but we're coming up on our second break and when we get there we're just not going to talk uh fresh water and, and hard water but we're going to talk a little bit about salt water okay as looks like the electricity is pulsating here at the house all right Uh-oh. come on power company keep on i know it's hot out but keep cranking that that energy towards us man do not take us off the air tonight right Right. <laughs> All right, we're going to step outside, take our next break, and if the power continues, we'll be right back after this. Right. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. All right, welcome back, everybody. Third segment of the show. Man, time's flying tonight. I know, right? And you know, and one of the questions coming in. This is kind of an interesting question. But do your rods float? No, not with a <laughs> definitely one hundred percent. Not with a reel on it. <laughs> There you go. So, Mark Coleman, I don't know why you would ask that, but <laughs> if you plan on dropping a mag's reel into the water with a with a reel on it, you ain't getting it back. You'll yeah. be swimming after it. And that's why he's in Indiana, not up here on the Great Lakes. Oh, good point. <laughs> yeah. I think if you just have the rod bare, you know, with our uh, mag's grip full handle, it probably would float or it would sink very slow. But who's going out on the boat with a rod without a reel, you know? There you go. <laughs> Maybe so from Indiana. And- it's, it's not a cane pole. <laughs> right? Exactly. So, you know, um, speak. we went into the break. We're talking about uh, you also, there's another aspect that you go down is you do fly fishing rods as well. Yep. Yeah, we do. Uh, we don't do a ton um, of fly business, but uh, we definitely do a good amount of it. And, you know, we uh, I had a guy come into the shop and pick one up today. But, yeah, that's pretty much summer only, you know, your June, July, August. Uh, do you find do you find that 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 little segment of your business is picking up because like you said that's a more of a summer sport that where you can get a little little trout stream here and there and you can kind of take a rod and head off down that way do you find that a growing segment um i don't think it's growing like fly fish i don't think it's i mean it's big but i feel like there's not a lot of guys that do it i just feel like the guys that do do it spend big money on stuff mm-hmm. but i feel like that industry is very small just from what i've noticed from interacting with uh, you know thousands of customers and just you know very few fly fishermen but the ones that are there are definitely spending big money on stuff yeah, they're definitely serious about their sport. Of course, that's yeah. anything with the outdoors. Everything costs a lot of money if you well, get into it heavily. Well, that's like if you get into fly tying, right? The little yeah. jigs and everything. It, yeah, archery. It's like, it's like reloading, yeah. right? You need Kayaking, all Kayaking, little... camping, anything. It, it's, it's, it costs money you know, to do this stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, so get the uh, best while you're at it. Yeah, so Adam, you want to take them down to saltwater? What yeah, how, how did you get started? Like, did someone just ask you to build them some saltwater rods? Or what kind of, did you just start experimenting with them? Or... I've always done a little bit of saltwater fishing, and uh, I just built a couple rods like when I first got into it and took them down to Florida. And then saltwater fishing's a blast. It's it absolutely blows fresh water out of the water. It's like even their bait fish that you, you're catching the bait fish down there, and they're fighting harder than any of the game fish that we have. Like a 30 pound king, you go catch you know a 
four or five pound blue runner or a bonito, I mean, that pulls just as hard as a 30 pound king. So the more I did it, the more I wanted to do it more and more and more. So now I, I try to go down to the salt, you know, three to four times a year. I bring rods every time, test them out, check them out and fish with them. And I love it. And I just, I went to Florida in, uh, in May. So I fished, you know, four out of the seven days I was there. And yeah, I absolutely love it. But it's expensive. I, I could never live down there because I couldn't <laughs> afford that kind of fishing. And, uh, but it's a good place to visit, that's for sure. You got to have some testing time, man. I mean, vacation time, man, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's, what's your favorite saltwater fish to go after? Um, probably right now it's yellowfin tuna on uh, on big, you know, twelve to fourteen inch topwater plugs. It's I do that trip every year down in Texas. We go out about two hundred miles and we go fish the oil rigs at night, and it is an absolute blast. But it, it's a grind; like you're not catching a bunch of them, but I think I caught like six or seven from 80 to 110 pounds in a day and a half trip. And but if you can just go to Florida and just go out 20, 30 miles, you can go catch as many amberjack as you want on top water. And that's an absolute blast because they pull pull super hard. Okay, I got to ask, 80 to 100 pound fish, how long does it take you to reel it in? The first one I got, I kind of babied it because I didn't understand how much heat you can actually put on those fish so it kicked my butt it took me an hour and when i was done i was so wiped out like i didn't want to fish for like a couple hours i was just it was like going through a really exhausting workout and then i talked to a couple of the locals that are like really experienced like man when you hook that fish you just put it on them right out of the gate because once they turn their head and go they keep going and going and going and i got my biggest tuna it was 110 pounds i caught it in 12 minutes because i just put the I had the right rod I had the right reel and the right tackle and I just put it on them and I'm like man that's way more fun when you can actually you know beat them a little bit quicker because I was so tired after that first one I didn't even want to fish I just couldn't where's you out worse than an MMA fight oh man I was like I was in way better shape when I was fighting but man that thing kicked my butt I was really surprised at how exhausted my whole body was that's awesome uh Adam you want to take Mark Coleman's question uh yeah uh do you offer real recommendations for pairing with your custom rods or can you put about any type of reel in them yeah you can put you know if you have a real preference you just want to get the right size like uh but we do stock um, reels that uh, with different sizes to pair with our rods that are well priced but they're they're really nice so i would say with like a panfish brook trout you want like a 1000 series and then you know your walleye stuff and you know two thousands the way to go so yeah that's what you uh that's what you paired on my open water ones is the two thousands mm-hmm. they work pretty well so yeah well question for you you know building these custom rods for people that that don't have any experience with them what what do you run into as far as the bis, biggest misconception with a custom rod when you're trying to encourage somebody to try one out or to, to buy one Well, there's a lot of people that just don't know what they want and they're just so undecisive. I just have them call me or call someone at the shop and I just ask them the questions. What do you fish for most? You know, what do you like throwing for baits? Because you pretty much match your rod to what style of bait that you're fishing. Like you can go catch a, you know, a 50 inch pike on one of our medium lights, no problem. But if you're throwing a huge two to three ounce bait on a medium light, it's not going to work right. Mm -hmm. So you want to match your rod up to your, to your bait. And then guys, uh, so I get that out of them first, what they're fishing and how they're fishing. And then they ask about a split grip or full grip. That's, you know, you shave off a little bit of weight with the split grip and it's a, you know, a looks thing. People want it to look sweet. And then with colors, I get a lot of guys who are just like, oh, just make it cool. And I have guys that want to do a whole set to match their boat or their favorite colors or their girlfriend's favorite color. And you can put your names on them. And but I think I've just put a bass on Adams on the last uh, yep. last rod we made for him. And yeah, that turned out sweet. Things you can do with them. You know, if we just did a set for a guy where he likes a shorter handle. So we customized his handle to exactly where he wanted it down to the half inch and so there's a lot of stuff you can do, but our stock rods are pretty much designed for, you know, performance and for the most common people that fish, that's what we kind of put the handle lengths and the colors and all that stuff for those. But if you wanted to customize a rod from top to bottom, that's a, that's an option that a lot of people like to do. 
Give me a give me a price range that we're looking at from uh, uh, low end to high end for a custom rod. So our rods, our open water rods, start at about one forty nine to about two fifty for like your walleye bass stuff like that. And then our uh, our steelhead rods are a little bit more expensive because they're thirteen feet long. We do custom cork, and those will start at anywhere from three, and they can go all the way up to six hundred. So. Okay pretty much whatever you want to do to them titanium eyes or and titanium is a really expensive metal so i mean a set of guides is extremely expensive for them yeah listen to you talk about the customization of these it reminds me a lot of the archery world because guys got to have everything match you know yeah you know the quiver's got to be the right camo pattern it's got to match the bow it's got to have the color combinations on the string and it's got to match my camo that i'm wearing and my boot you know we go on and on about it but it seems like you know in the fishing realm it, it's starting to, to be that way as well but the other thing you were talking about the different you know the stiffness of the rod the, the length of the rod how sensitive it is versus the weights it, it to me it kind of equates back to archery as well you know you've got to have the right arrow it's got to have the right spine deflection the right weight the right mm-hmm. weight broadhead on the end um you know there's a lot of science but behind all of this um where did you learn that science to how to put these combinations together so when i just started building them I mean, obviously, I don't build rods and not test them. Like, mm-hmm. I had a lot more time to test back in the day, but I still do test heavy before I bring on a, another model. And I just fish them, and I'm like, oh, this one's a little too tip heavy, so I'm going to adjust the handle and everything else and make the adjustments. I, then I'll fish it and fish it. And once I get it right, that's when I, you know, because there is a lot to it. You know, if you have a rod that has too much weight on the tip, that's going to tire out your hand all day. But if it's balanced perfect, it's almost like holding nothing. And a lot of our walleye rods are, you know, anywhere from four and a half to five ounces, which is a light rod. But if it's not balanced, it's going to feel heavy all day if you're jigging it. But if you have a nicely balanced rod, it's almost like holding nothing. And and I'm still learning. Like I said, I still, you know, I don't just try to do this just to hurry up and get it done. Like, I really, really love doing this. And I want to make the best stuff that I possibly can. That Nothing makes me feel better is when I get the reviews. It's like, man, this is the best rod. This is, and we get those a lot. And it's just, I'm, I got a really good team. You know, my, my guys here, super good attention to detail. And, you know, without them, I wouldn't be able to do nothing. But it's, uh, it's been fun. And, you know, I just try to put out the best stuff that I possibly can. Because I don't like, now that I've fished with it, I don't like fishing with, you know, stuff that's not good and if you take care of it just like bow like a bow you know you're gonna spend fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars on a bow but if you take care of that bow it's gonna last forever Mm -hmm. just same thing with a you know a a nice rod and i do try to keep my prices competitive you know 220 for a custom rod that's really high end that's really not too bad compared to a lot of other companies doing it so i try to make it affordable for the average fisherman not just the the higher end guys so you test every rod that you build then right yep all right yep. And, and then uh my, uh adam if you see mark's question above that one um mark asks, do you offer any repair services on your rods or on any of the rods that you sell on any of my stuff like if you break the, the blank the rod itself it's really not fixable but if you uh say you smash a guide and break it off if you send it back we'll fix it for free i mean if our if our handle or anything any of our work ever fails we re- fix or replace it for free and then if you break an eye off or you know and it's your fault well if you send it in we'll replace it uh fix fix it for free but obviously if you slam it in a car door we can't really fix the blank once that blank's damaged it's never you're never going to make it the same again so you gotta buy another rod, okay, right? And, and Tammy, <laughs> and Tammy, and Tammy definitely wants to know: uh, Do you have hot? Do you have pink as a color for a custom rod? Yes, I do. We have uh, we have it in ice rods, and we just got them in open water rods too. I got one sitting behind me right now. And and Matthew Waltenberg says you are the best rod maker out there. A very good product. I appreciate that, Matt. He's a he's a good guy. I think he's been a customer for a while now, so. I tell you what, we're coming up here towards the last break, but before we go to break, one quick question. When you first started building rods, do you still have the first rod that you ever built? Yeah, I actually have it in my shop. Okay. And now looking at it five years later, it does not look very good. 
it, it did the job and uh but yeah it looks a little bit rough but i didn't have the tools that i do now back then either so okay so you you do it a little differently then yeah okay. a lot different he's he's a continuous improving kind of guy yeah that's the sign of a good builder that's always right, yeah. honing your skills so all right we're going to take our last break we're going to step outside we come back i know danny's got a few usual questions we'll see if anything else pops up here in the chat uh here in the last segment so we'll step outside we'll be right back after this acceleration is part of pse's dna pse pioneered the speed movement now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at PSCArchery.com. Last segment of the show, before we turn Danny loose, you're up in the UP. If somebody was having to be driving through Gwyn, would they be able to stop into your shop and take a look at and maybe try out a few different things and put them in their hand there? Yeah, so we have all the models in stock. So if you wanted to just uh, hold one and feel the action, um, you can buy a stock rod or you can check everything out and then design one right here in the shop. You know, if you don't want a stock, you want to go custom, you can pick the action you want by feeling it. And then you can go through and we can run you through the shop and you can literally design your own rod from top to bottom. How did how did you come up with mags for a so name? My last name is Magdaleno. And back in the day, uh, when I fished with some of my buddies, they'd just call me mags. And when I got this going, I'm like, man, I got to think of something. I just don't know what. It's got to be simple. I mean, you don't want to have a name where you have to say all the time that's super long. And I mean, mags is pretty simple. And uh, so that's what I went with. And I had a guy make me this logo, and I like how simple it is. It looks good on everything, and it's just super simple, and I'm really, really happy with it, and I'm happy I went with that name. We're looking at your apparel page right now, and, yeah, it, it is a nice, simple logo. It looks good on everything, whether it's black, gray, dark, light, dark, uh, or when you got the one in yellow that you got on, on your, your head right now. But, uh, yeah, that, that Mags logo looks really good, and it, it's good to know where that the origins of the name of your company came from because it has definitely meaning. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so. Adam. You got any questions? Yeah. How did you? Uh, how did the Eskimo deal come about that you built the ice rods for? Oh, so I was just uh, I was at my shop, and it was July. I remember July because July is our slowest month of the year. So I'm always like trying to, you know, find work and just trying to come up with cool stuff, get caught up on everything. And I just got this call out of the blue from one of the Eskimo uh, reps or marketing guys, and he just kind of ran it by me. And I was like, just like mind blown. I'm like, is this, is this a real guy from Eskimo? Like, I just didn't even believe it. And then, so we talked and then he said he was interested. And then uh, I didn't hear from him for like a month. And I'm like, well, that was short lived, but I was excited for a minute. And then I got this call like a month later and he's like, all right, we're ready to do this deal. And I was just like, holy cow, I'm building rods for like the second biggest ice fishing company in the world and i was just like so mind blown i couldn't believe it and so you, yeah we did that and man it was so cool do you do know that. how they got a hold do you know how they how they got to know of you so i think one of their staff used to live in the up or he used to travel up here and i think he got his hands on one of our rods at the shows or just something but i didn't know i didn't even know the guy and uh so I think he did that, and he's like, oh, I think it'd be cool to do a collab. I use your stuff. It's really good. And I was, like, so excited for that. That was one of the coolest things I've ever done, to have a company of that caliber call this little guy in the middle of the UP where there's just nothing. There's no jobs. There's just nothing going on up here. And for a company like that to call me, it was, man, I just felt so good. It was almost after, like, winning a fight. Just all that hard work paid off, and... Yeah, it's uh, we're do we just uh signed another, we're doing another deal with them, so we'll be doing some some more different styles and stuff this year. And yeah, it's a uh, really good people over there. I got to go uh, check out their factories and see all the cool stuff that they're doing over there. So, That's and then I actually awesome. hand delivered the rods last year, I drove them right there and met everyone. And 
it was really cool. So it's going to be a sense of accomplishment uh, and, and recognition as well from from somebody of that caliber. Yeah, yeah, they're. I feel like they have some of the best ice fishing stuff in the game right now. Like their stuff is really good quality. Um, I mean, Clam, I believe, is quite a bit bigger. You know, Clam's a good company too. But just to have you know a company like Eskimo reach out, it was uh, it was really nice. So uh, another question coming down is: So for Pat, what is the next big thing for you in custom rod business, or is it a secret? It is a secret. I wonder who asked that question because we just, yeah, we just did something absolutely massive. Uh, we've been working on it for about eight months, nine months, and I just went down to tour for a tour, and uh, we just got it done, and it's going to be huge, and I'm extremely excited for it. It's definitely like nothing that anyone would ever expect. It's different, but it's super cool, and it's going to be huge for for the team here. So, and, uh, so we're looking a couple months out for the big announcement. I think it's going to be around early August. But yeah, I'm I'm super excited for it. I think I mean the potential is super huge. But I'm not expecting. You know, I'm not a huge guy that just oh this is what's going to happen. I'm I just work my butt off and hope for the best and prepared for not the best. But the potential for this is just absolutely amazing. So I'm really excited, but I'm trying not to get in, you know, get ahead of myself either. Well, so. I tell you what, you let us know when it's coming down, and we'll be glad to share the news with everybody that we know up here at Up North Journal, and obviously Adam Wynn on the fishing side, telling everybody on the fishing community about what's happening with Mags and what's going on there. Hopefully, Ad- early August. Adam, that's your yeah. assignment now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be watching for it for sure. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Pat. Congrats, man. Yeah, thanks. It's, yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm just mind blown all the time. I'm super grateful for the support. And it's, uh, it's been a journey, man. It's, you know, a lot of the stuff I'm really not looking for. Like, I'm not out, like, really searching for any of the things that are happening. So I couldn't imagine if I did, but I like growing the way we're growing. And yeah, just kind of keeping it quality, you know, custom, design your own stuff and top notch. And, but we'll see. We got some really cool stuff coming up, and I think with that, what we're doing, it might be, you know, very overwhelming. That'll be but. awesome. And I tell you what, that that, that and you kind of said it is you're not going out looking for it. So my thought is that it's a lot of word of mouth, which is good because it's like a testament to you. You know, it's not the sales pitch kind of pat coming through. It's somebody else telling somebody else, hey. Go check out Mag's custom rods and, and, and look for yourself. Proof and performance. Yeah, proof and performance, yeah. and and then you start to get you start to reap your benefits like you are, and and hopefully this this deal that you're gonna announce whenever you do, uh, Adam will spill it to everybody, including Mr. Mark Coleman, because he's not gonna spill it right now. So yeah, yeah. It's, so it'll be fun. Adam, got any questions for him? Um, what's your favorite fishing? Open water, ice fishing, or saltwater fishing? Well, salt saltwater is not even really a comparison, so I'll just leave that out. <laughs> so, how about in Michigan? Lake. What's your favorite uh, fishing? Um, through the ice, hundred percent lake trout. Lake trout through the ice is an absolute ride. If you've never done it, it'll ruin every other t- t- kind of ice fishing for you. Like it's an absolute blast when you can get on a good lake trout bite. And then open water, I chartered for Lake Trail for the last 10 years. But recently I've been bass guy, man. I have been chasing those uh, green largemouth heavy for the last couple of years. And I think a lot of it's just coming off of a big boat, high stress. You're running 100 miles a trip, a lot of expenses and stress. So my bass boat, no stress. It's all fun. The bass are always biting. And you can have the lake to yourself because nobody even wants to fish them up here. So, right, exactly. Nobody, I've been a bass guy yeah. the last few years. That's nobody crazy. touches them up there. Yeah. yeah. So Mark Coleman also says that he wants to see your name on the side of a race car. That's when you know you've made it. I had I had the offer last summer <laughs> um, to be on one of the NASCAR cars. But it just didn't make sense for me. It was too short notice. But uh, didn't make sense. But there's a few local race cars around here that have them on there. There you go. So, so Mark, it's already been done, just on yeah. what scale. That's right. Yeah. So Mark, much, there's been a lot of cool stuff that I've seen with uh, stickers. I got a couple um, brand new Rangers in uh, Green Bay that are fully wrapped in mags, and you know some of the best uh, guides in the Midwest, Brett Alexander and Lonnie Goldman, both have 
they're full brand new rangers wrapping mags and there's a lot of cool stuff out there that well, i never dreamed would ever happen we'll get uh we'll get a, a small sticker so uh mark can put it on that that Try bike when he's pulling, <laughs> when he's pulling yeah. the call to back or through his food plot. Right. Yeah. So he can yeah. represent. There you go. Yeah. So, Danny, you ready? I'm ready. Uh, we're going to turn you loose now. So, Danny's got a, <laughs> a cu- couple questions here that he loves to ask everybody. Tammy's waiting to hear the answers. So, yeah. So, <laughs> we'll keep it simple. We keep it simple. We keep it fun. We keep it lighthearted. Just like we're sitting around. Well, we'll say we're sitting around the bass boat. There you yeah. Go. Sitting on the lake talking. You know, you do a lot. You do some traveling. You said you've been to, to Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, downstate Michigan. When you're traveling, what are you listening to on the radio? Um, if I'm traveling by myself, a lot of times I don't listen to nothing. I just, I don't know, that's my time for quiet and I get to think and just kind of, you know. But sometimes I like rock and roll. Um, sometimes I get into like the, the motivational podcasts and just like, uh, you know, stuff like that. But a lot of times I don't even listen to, to the radio when I'm on road trips. You know, I, I, I get a feeling I know what you're doing. You're thinking it gives you that time, peace of mind to think business. What what's yep. your next step? What's your mm-hmm. next what's yeah. your next reach, right? I am constantly trying to keep it going and you know, what I can do better and you know, I just want to keep the train moving. All right. So while you're thinking to yourself how big you're gonna make it, whether you're gonna be the next big guy out there well-known mags custom what are you snacking on what's your snack go-to snack um man i like jerky and uh those uh they're like the extreme like sour patch kids but the different brand they're like the extreme so once in a while i'm not a huge candy guy but uh yeah and if, if there's a if taco spot around i'm definitely hitting that up all right that's cool that's cool i tell you what you know Someday Mike and Dan and Adam are going to come up with Tammy and Mark, and we're we're going to stop at your house, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna make us a meal. What yeah. would be your your go to meal to say, hey guys, this is going to knock your socks off? What would you make for us? I would probably. I've been doing a lot of smoking lately on a, on my grill. Uh, I've been doing some uh, some ribs that have been extremely good, but. Uh, that's probably something like ribs or like maybe a brisket. I've done a handful of briskets lately, and they're good. So uh, made with made with sauce or dry rub? Uh dry rub. Okay. Or my dad has a taco truck, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, uh, he parks it in front of my shop about three times a week in the summer, so I I eat those up pretty good too. <laughs> Road trip, dude. We gotta make a road trip up north. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. fishy so rods and a taco truck. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> In the UP, thirty-four years, and they are so good still. I could eat them every day. Nice. All right, two questions left. One is from Tammy. What is the best piece of business advice you could give someone that you use? Um, you gotta surround yourself with the right people, and the biggest thing with anything is you just have to work hard, like. You have to, you know, people think that, oh, I'm lucky, I'm lucky. It's like, you know, I work super hard and to get where I'm at, everything I've ever done, I've always just worked really hard at it. And I've been successful at a lot of things that I've done and you're going to fail. Things are going to happen, you know, but you just got to keep going. No matter what happens, you got to keep going and you got to work, got to outwork the competition is what my dad and my coach always used to tell me and I'll work the competition, and the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I am 100% believer in both of those. Yeah, your hard work brings you your own luck. Yep, yep. That's awesome. Exactly. Uh, so, okay, so Mark Coleman says, barbecue, I'm on the way. And Tammy says, we need to, some. your dad is someone we need to meet. Yum under the taco truck. All oh, right. Geez. So we, 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 we sat there. Your dad is, we, we went to the taco truck. We all had some tacos. We're all sitting around. We're stuffed. What would be an outdoor story, whether it be fishing related, hunting related, uh, your rod business related? What's a story you're going to tell us that rings in your mind that is something you'd want to tell us? Huh. I, just like any kind of fishing story? or just and like Anything that, that, yeah. that made an impact in, in your mind that you'd want to tell somebody else, us. Huh. Um, I would probably go into detail about like... Um, it's it's makes for good combo and just anyone that's like struggling or just like anything in general i like to kind of tell people my story and like what happened and just go into detail and like 
how dark that place really was and just no matter where you are like you can make it happen you just you just gotta work and you just gotta do it and you just gotta you can't stop you know there's gonna be really tough days and bad days and you just gotta brush them off and get up the next morning and just keep it going because you know it's, if you quit it's never gonna work so amen to that you yeah. know and that's the thing it, it's almost in essence a motivational speaking moment mm-hmm. yeah I don't know. That's just how well, I've always done it. It's a life lesson, right? So, yeah. Adam, do you got anything for our guest? Well, I think that's about it. I think we uh, picked his brain about his business there for sure. Yeah, there's some knowledge dropped in this one. This was a good one. Well, yeah, I tell for you, sure. I, I tell you what, folks. Like I said, we've, we've had Pat on for an hour now. Get over there to his website, magscustomrods.com. You can check him out on Facebook and Instagram as well. Yep. It's uh, just Mag's Custom Rods on both. So get over there. Give him a like. Give him a share. Uh, if you're ever up in the Gwynn area in the UP of Michigan, he does have a brick-and-mortar store, so stop yep. in. Like you said, check him out. <laughs> and enjoy a taco truck while you're there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? he's here two nights a week, so... There you go. So, all right. Well, we're going to wrap up the show here. Uh, hang with us, Pat, after we get done here and we sign off. And we'll chat briefly and then we'll let you go. But uh, for everybody who's listening on the podcast portion of the show, you know, make sure that uh, you, you go over to iTunes, give us a review over there, if you would, please. That helps the people who support us. And in turn, we, that helps us support them as well. Uh, and for those of you that are watching live, do the same thing. Give us a like, follow, share. Go over to all his social media pages over at Mag's Custom Rods. Give him a like, follow, share as well. Share the show for us. We sh- certainly would appreciate it. And that. if you catch our show on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. That helps us as well. There you go. So next Wednesday? Next Wednesday, we are going to talk about that hat right there. That one right there. That right there. And everything that came around the event that happened with that hat. And the only hint we're going to give you is we were up at TAC. There you go. So that's going to do it for us this week, folks. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday night, 730, same time right here on Facebook. Y'all take care. Stay cool out there. It's hot. We'll see y'all next week. This episode was brought to you by PSC Archery. Deer Camp Coffee. Fuck Bates. JPO Game Call. The Island Armory. Hacker Max. Sunrise Archery and C3 Better Than Hunt technology. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.